Hey, how the heck is everyone doing? This is Coded Steel bringing you another processing tutorial. First off, before we get to any programming, I want to announce that I'm expanding my channel outward. I'm going to be doing a lot of um, a lot more things than I normally do. I'm still going to do all my programming and all my educational stuff that I've been putting up, but I'm expanding my channel out to do a bunch of different things now. So you guys can tell all your friends or whatever else to tune into my channel. I'd very much appreciate that. If you guys could like and subscribe, whatever else, I will be expanding it. I promise there'll be some pretty interesting videos going up in the future. Um, this is all part of my plan, guys. I'm trying to grow my channel, obviously. I'm trying to make it a little bit more, you know, usable for everyone or accessible to everyone. Not everyone likes the whole programming aspect of things, so I kind of want to try to appeal to everybody and please everybody. So... Anyways, uh, stay tuned for some of the future videos I might be putting up, and uh, I should be putting some of those up this week. Anyways, into the actual programming part for processing. What are we going to do today? I said we were going to cover a for loop in the last tutorial, and I actually came up with a pretty creative example for a for loop. So it's actually going to be pretty cool, I think, and you guys will actually like this, hopefully. And uh, without further ado, let's actually get started. So first thing what we're going to do is we're going to do our void setup, just like we always do. Void setup or void loop. We're not going to use void loop today, though, because we're going to use the for loop. The for loop pretty much is going to be our loop that's going to do the whole code for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the size to 300 by 300. For no particular reason guys, I just chose a window size of 300 by 300. So that's actually going to give us, I think it is 90,000 pixels that comes out to be. So if you divide 90, what we're actually going to print out is we're going to print out 90 squares on the, or actually 100 squares, sorry, on the screen. So if you guys can see how that's going to happen, you might not see it yet, I'll show you here in a minute. Anyways, we're going to do this type then this keyword called for. Okay, now what for is, is it's an iteration. So basically what I do is I do this, I do int y, I declare the variable. You guys should know variable declarations, that makes complete and total sense. And then what I'm going to type next, you guys might not have seen before, y less than height. Height actually stores the value of the window size. So that's this parameter right here. It doesn't store the value of this. There's another variable called screen width and screen height. I'm not using those are the entire screen, take up the entire screen area. We're not doing those. So height is actually this number. I Could I use 300 here? Yes, yeah, so it do the same thing, but it's more, cre I guess it's more, uh, you know, it's just a more, used way of doing this I guess is what you'd say more creative way of doing it I guess I don't know use the tools they gave you I guess is the best way to say it and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do y plus equals 30 now with this sequence so hey the basically our for loop is this I'm starting a variable I'm initializing a variable and I'm telling you where I'm starting at I'm starting at zero and then for y less than height, how long am I going to continue this? While y is less than height, I'm going to continue to run this for loop. And then I'm incrementing by 30 each time. So it's going to grow by 30 each time. This number is going to grow. So it'll be 30 the first time, then 60, then 90, then so on and so forth and so forth. Until it reaches maximum height, then it will break out of the loop. So now that you guys understand that, and hopefully that made sense to you. If not, I will. hopefully it will make your sense in a second. And we're going to do x less than, what, what do you think now, guys? We're going to do the width, just like I was saying before. And it's going to be the same stuff. And I don't know why I'm adding spaces. Plus equals 30. So those are both of our for loops taken care of like that. You guys may have seen curly braces like this before around loops or whatever else. We're not doing a for loop that's going to have multiple like blocks in it. So I only need to type 4 and I don't need to put the curly braces if I needed to say, you know, repeat this, this set of instructions, then I would need to put curly braces around the set of instructions I want to repeat. But since it knows where it's going to start and stop by that curly brace, or, or not needing, it doesn't need curly braces because there's two, it's a nested for loop with another for loop. The second for loop, though, does need curly braces because I need to tell it which instructions to repeat. So, first off, what we're going to do 
is we're going to declare global variables. So this is commonly done in a lot of processing programs that you declare global variables. Since main is run in the background, as I've explained to you guys in previous tutorials, you can only really declare variables in the global scope of things. Otherwise, your other functions won't be able to see those functions. It's called variable scope. I will explain variable scope in a later tutorial, but for right now, you guys need to understand in order for setup and loop to be able to see the same variables, they need to be typed outside of the functions. Anyways, um, this is just going to store color value. Okay, so the next thing you guys have not seen before too. There's a bunch of new things in this tutorial. I do apologize for that, but this is pretty cool stuff that we're gonna be doing. In order to be able to do some of the more complicated programs, you need to understand a lot of these functions. So any of you guys who have followed along with my C tutorials in the past know about the rand function. Well, the rand function is random in here, and you even don't need to type srand it's seeded for you. You don't have to type this function anymore. Any of you who know about SRAN and RAN, you don't need to seed the random function anymore. It's seeded automatically. It's seeded with the time, probably, is how they did this algorithm. I don't know, I haven't seen the function code, so I'm just assuming that that's how they did it. And then I specify two parameters within the RAND function, 0 and 255. Why 0 and 255? 0 is the minimum value that I want the random function to take on. And 255 is the maximum value that I want the, um, the RAND function to take on. So these are basically my limits. Don't go any lower than 0 and don't go any higher than 255 is what I'm telling the RANDOM function. And then assign that value that you return, since RANDOM is a function that will return a value, it'll store it in R. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with R two more times. Guess why, guys? Because we're going to do the same thing for G and the same thing for B. So basically, if you guys understand what I was saying before, we're going to get random color values here is what's going to happen. It's going to be any color between zero or any RGB value between 0 and 255. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the fill function. Hope for a fill method. I, I keep calling these functions, guys, but they're methods. Honestly, I don't see the point. They're, they're just naming it something different. These are actually methods, though, because this is JavaScript coding. So I do apologize. If I call a function, or um, if I call it a function, it's actually a method. If I call it a method, that's actually what it's supposed to be. But that's one of the things. I've programmed in too many different languages, so I don't know. You know, I, I can't keep up with the whole terminology thing. So anyway, the fill method. And we're just going to plug in three values for the fill method, R, G, and B. If you guys remember the fill method, this is the actual RGB. This will give you the red, green, blue. The other one specifying a single parameter is a grayscale color. So hopefully you guys remember that from a previous tutorial, because I did, ex I do know I explained that. And then the last thing we're going to do is type the rect function. Now this one I know you guys should know. And we're going to specify our location as x, y, and a 30 by 30 rect. So what's going on with this whole program? I'm going to explain it. So we're creating window size 300 by 300. That should make sense to you guys. We're going to get a window maybe about this big or I don't know, about that big by that big, maybe something like that. And it's going to just basically what you guys should expect to see if you can analyze this code. You're going to see a bunch of squares on the screen that are going to be different colors. Hopefully you can see that from actually analyzing the code that that's what it's going to do. If you can't, I suggest you review the fill function and the rect or review some of these functions to kind of understand what they do on the processing reference website because this is actually a very simple and straightforward program guys so if you guys do not understand this make sure you review some programming or you play with this tutorial anyways we should expect to see 100 squares that are different colors and hopefully that's exactly what we see and we got an error guys actually I got this error on purpose don't believe me? Well, I wanted to show you guys something. It's called typecasting. So, I've never explained typecasting in any of my videos before. But in order for this code to work, we cannot convert from float to int. So, what's going on here, guys? Random doesn't return an integer value. We declare ints up here. But rand does not return an integer. It returns a float. So, it could be 254.5, 2. 
50.973 or something like that. So we don't want that. We want the pure integer value. So how do we do that? How do we make it return us an int? What we do is we do this thing called typecasting. And basically what we do is we just say, we type this word, the, the keyword int before this and put it in parentheses. And that tells the rand function, hey, when you're a float, convert yourself to an int and then assign yourself to red. Same thing with this, convert yourself from a float value to an int and sign yourself to green. Convert yourself from a float, blah, 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 to blue. Okay, so that's basically what this is doing. You could do this different ways with different, you can use the parentheses differently, like typing it like this or something if you wanted to. And, you know, I, actually I guess you can't, it won't work that way in, in processing, but I know in different compilers you can type it that way. So, but this is usually probably the most common way of typing it. This tells it's uh, processing I want to typecast this method random and return it as an int. So anyways, enough jabber, jab, jibber jabbering. Let's actually see this code in action. There we are, guys. We have 100 different squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, I didn't want to make sure I didn't put my foot in my own mouth. There's 100 squares on here, and they're all different colors. I don't think a single one of them is the exact same color. There's a few that are close, but I don't think they're exactly the same. But if I generate this again, I should get a different result, guys, because it's random. And we do, because I remember this was a lighter green up here. Now it's like a teal almost. So there you have it, guys. That's a simple demonstration of a for loop in processing. And that's what it's capable of doing. There's much... This is, I think this is actually a pretty cool demonstration for the for loop. It shows you some graphic, more graphical aspect that processing is known for. It's more of a graphics programming language. That's what it's designed to do. Create a bunch of images and fancy stuff on a screen and whatever else. So anyways, I guess that's all I'm going to cover for this time is the for loop. I wanted to cover the while loop, but to be honest, I don't think it's going to be very useful to us in processing because of the way processing works in other programming languages it would be extremely useful but in processing a while loop is almost useless guys because we have so many other methods that we can call that will do things for us that it almost makes the while loop obsolete in processing especially since we have our own draw function that is in, in its in essence of in and of itself a while loop so Anyways, play around with this code, mess around, assign your RGB values statically, or use if loops to decide how you're going to assign them and play around with the squares or whatever if this doesn't make any sense to you. Or the other thing you could always do, guys, I never, I didn't do this, but see how that this does. We'll put the no stroke in. If you guys remember what no stroke does, we get those black, those uh, little black lines in there. If we don't want the black lines, we can get rid of them with the no stroke command. And now we just get solid color blocks without black lines separating them. So play around with this, make sure you understand all of this code. And if you do, then you will pretty much understand the for loop and you will know how it's going to work in future tutorials. Anyways, I've talked long enough guys. Um, play, like I said, play around with this code and uh, hopefully in the next tutorial, I have something even more exciting and, and interesting for you guys to play with and look at. So. That's all for this tutorial, guys. Please subscribe to my channel, like, comment, tell your friends to subscribe, like, comment, and I will see you guys in the next processing tutorial.